What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create left and right boundaries to your infinite scrolling games in Python using Pygame. After I posted my previous video on how to create an infinitely scrolling game with an endless background, I had a few comments saying, okay, but let's say you have a game like Mario where maybe you have a repeating background, but there is eventually an end limit and you want to limit to how far back you can go. So you're not just creating like a Flappy Bird style game where there's no end and you want to scroll infinitely. So that is not particularly hard to do. I thought it would be a great follow up to the previous video. So if you have any questions about what you see in this video we are starting from uh, kind of some code that we already wrote so be sure to check that video out if you need some assistance or let me know in the comments below what questions you have and I'll get back to you as soon as I can without any further ado let's get into the tutorial okay so for this tutorial we are starting with a program that already scrolls to the left and to the right infinitely um, so again, if you haven't followed the previous tutorial, I'll uh, put a card to it somewhere. It may have already popped up um, and I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. Or you can just pause on this screen and then pause on this screen. It's only about 50 lines of code. You can copy it down if you want. Um, or if you have your own game already built and you just need the concepts in this video, that's great. You're all set. Just understand we are starting from a bit of a platform uh, for this video. So now that we're getting into it, um, let's say our overall goal is to add a finish line somewhere in the far f distance of your game and also a back wall so you can't just scroll backwards endlessly either. Um, and to do that, it's, it's not too complicated. We just want to essentially um, set up some overall position tracking. So we have this variable scroll that is keeping track of how far in the left and right we go, but we're only using it to reset how many panels we need to draw. And that's how we handle making sure we have infinite um, panels getting drawn in front of us and behind us. But what we want to do is add a variable that we'll call total distance. I think that's a logical name for it. And we will also add to that speed times direction. And you'd say, well, why not just add scroll to it? Cause it's already getting done here. But scroll is going to be the same variable, but once it gets to background width, which in this case, it's hard to say, it's however wide your image is, but mine would be like 400. So we'd be tracking up to 400 and then and then we would have to move on whereas this variable we're never going to reset it to zero so we have this now that's going to constantly be incrementing how far we go and then uh, to make this a little more useful we'll put it on the screen but to do that we have to just quickly set up a few things that we didn't do in the previous game so we'll call this episode two of this tutorial series and we're gonna create a few things. So we'll create that variable total distance because you have to initialize every variable that you wanna use. And when the game loads in, it'll be zero, so that's perfect. And let's set up a font. Um, to do that, that's what you have to do to use text in your games, and that's gonna be pygame.font.font. And I'll make the text a little bit bigger because I get a lot of comments saying this the text is kind of hard to read. Um, I'm sorry, programming, it's not normal to have a huge text. But so pygame.font.font. And then you need the name of your TTF file. So uh, I've covered this in previous videos. There are a few built-in fonts. So like I use FreeSans bold TTF because that's built into my uh, system in Pygame. Um, but if you need a font, then just drop a TTF file into your folder. They're free online. And then uh, you just give this a few other arguments, uh, true, and then uh, font size. So we'll do 24. That's big enough to read, but not like uncomfortably large. Okay. And now we'll put this total distance on the screen. So to do that, it's font.render. And then you give it what text you want um, and we want this to so we'll do a formatted string that says distance traveled and then we'll in these curly brackets put total distance in there and if you have units you can put something here meters feet um, really any units because it doesn't matter um, so you know you could say we've traveled uh, that many elephants so we'll do that and then there's a two times um, there's a two-step process so step one is define the text and then step two is and you got to call this something we'll call it distance text 
And then step two is you actually draw it onto the screen. So uh, screen dot blit distance text, and then you give it, oops, and in the font dot render, you also need to give it, uh, whoops, this is where you give it um, an alias and then a color. And actually, I don't know that we needed this true up here. I think we just needed font size. Sorry, I think I got those backwards. Um, okay, and then down here, all you have to do is give it the text name and then where you want it to be drawn. So we'll make it uh, X and Y starting position of 50. So that'll get off the left edge a little bit. And then we'll do uh, height minus 50. So that'll get it up from the bottom a little bit. But this is just how I'm gonna show you what our total distance variable is doing. So now if I run this, you'll see we have distance traveled, we've gone zero elephants. Again, units doesn't matter. I just thought that'd be funny. And remember the scroll variable is maybe backwards from the way you would think it is because we're using it to move the background. So as I go to the right, it's actually creating a negative variable. And so what you would probably wanna do, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna get rid of elephants. Uh, I'll put feet in here. Sorry if you guys are metric, just put meters. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use total distance times negative one because I want it to count up as I go to the right and I want to count down as I go to the left. All right, but now you can see we have this counter that's pretty cool. It's counting how far we've traveled in total, but we haven't put any limits in overall. So let's say that you wanted to add an ultimate barrier and a back, uh, so like a, a finishing barrier at 3,000 feet in, in front of you and a back wall 1,000 feet behind where you start. Well, let's start by just calling it back wall um, and we'll give it a variable actually. We'll say back distance of negative a thousand, so a thousand feet behind you. And we'll say finish line will be 3000 in front of you, okay? Now we're gonna use those variables to track um, overall how far the player has gone and you'll see how we'll do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down underneath the player position and I'm gonna put in two new uh, walls, I guess. Um, I'm gonna make them rectangles cause collision is really easy in Pi game with rectangles. Um, but you can you could make them images if you want. So pygame.draw.rect, we'll do screen, and I'm gonna make the back wall red just so you can uh, easily distinguish between the two in the game. And we're gonna talk about the position for it, but the X and Y starting position for the back wall should be relative to that back wall and the total distance that we've traveled. Because you're not just going to draw a wall at negative 1000, you're actually going to draw a wall that moves as the player moves until you get close enough to finishing the game, all right? So think about your X starting position. It should actually be um, back distance plus total distance traveled. So again, remember total distance is going to be a negative as you move forwards. So if you want this wall, which is initially going to be drawn at negative 1000 to appear on screen as you travel backwards, then you're going to add the total distance. And once we've traveled a thousand feet backwards, then it's going to appear on the left edge of the screen. This will be a little easier to just show it. Um, and then we'll say, we'll just make it a vertical line that spans the whole screen. We'll make it six wide and we'll make it uh, the whole height of the screen. So this should be all we have to do to see the back wall. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the front wall right now too so I can demonstrate them both. And we'll call this finish wall. And instead of red, I'm gonna make this one green. And then uh, for this one, we want to use finish. Do, do, do finish line distance plus total distance again because we're using that total distance variable so it's going to be like negative 2000 when the finish line which is getting drawn at 3000 um, is is actually going to come onto screen or 1400 whatever it's going to be um, so but this one because this is an x and y starting position the only way we would see it at the exact time we want to is if we also subtract the width of it um, and maybe that'll make a little more sense once we've stopped creating the scrolling, but let's just go ahead and see if that works. So we're going backwards and at a thousand, I would hope to see this rectangle. Okay. And there we go. That's cool. That's a finish line, but we're not actually finishing the game yet. Okay. You understand? So now I'll go ahead and go this way. Um, and we're going to hit the front, what are we calling finish line? So we hit the back wall. Here's the finish line and bam 
And you might say, well, we made the finish line 3,000. Why is it uh, right here? But that's because the player is being drawn at approximately 500, and we're adding we're adding uh, the distance traveled. So it when we hit exactly 3,000, that's actually when the line leaves the screen. So there's ways to compensate for that if you want. Like you could say finish line equals 3,000, and then plus width divided by four. But to be honest, what you're probably gonna do is you probably have a set game in mind. You've probably created a, a platformer or something like that. And you're probably just gonna do this with trial and error. So there's your finish line. But now we have to actually um, handle how to stop scrolling at the edges um, when we, we have to handle stop scrolling at the edges when we get either of those in screen. So let's go ahead and add a new variable that I'll call um, boundary limits. And it's gonna be equal to false when we start. But we're gonna come down here uh, to the bottom. Of the, it, it really doesn't matter where you put this code. I'm just putting it all at the bottom. So I'm differentiating between the old stuff we already did and the new stuff. Um, and what we're gonna say is we're just gonna set this boundary um, limit based on the total distance. So we'll say if total distance, total distance is, and now we have to be careful with sign here because it goes positive as we go backwards. So we'll say greater than or equal to 1000. Yeah, 1000, which is when the back line comes onto the screen. Or total distance is going to be less than or equal to, and then 1400, because we've moved forward 1400. And remember, the screen is 1600 wide, the finish line is being drawn at 3000 plus total distance. So it's going to come onto screen as soon as we hit 1400. And if these conditions are true, then we want that boundary limits equal to true. And then else boundary limits bound or bound shouldn't have picked a variable it's so hard to spell boundary limits equal to false. Okay. And so, but we're not doing anything with that variable yet. Uh, we set this variable up that checks whether or not boundary limits have been met. But what we need to do now is we need to come up to our scrolling functionality that checks uh, whether or not to move the background. And we just wanna add an if statement that says if not boundary limits, okay? And if not boundary limits, we're gonna do all of this. But then what we'll say is else, so this means we have hit the limits, then we are going to, um, move the player's position now. So player X plus equal to speed times direction. So when we're not at the limits of the screen, the player is going to essentially stay in one place and the screen is going to move behind him. That's how Mario works. That's how platformers typically work. You move everything behind the player, but the player more or less is in one spot. That's the easiest way to do like motion control. And then once we get to these boundary limits, we're going to move the player's position. The only problem is we are currently not drawing the player um, based on a variable. So we want, instead of that at width divided by four, we want to get drawn based on a variable. And in the beginning, we're still gonna set player X equal to width divide by four. So that's where we want the game to start. But then we get to the edges of our game and we'll start moving the player. This is pretty close to done already, actually. Um, but what you'll see when we load this up is we still have some issues with this code. So let's go ahead and just run it real quick. Let's go backwards because it's faster. Oh, there we go. And we're going to hit a thousand. So there's our line. You can see it. But now what you'll see is kind of weird. Uh, one, we definitely did that backwards, but two, we can still travel. So hang on, I, I did do that backwards though. This should be speed times uh, the opposite of direction. Whoop, not that. The player's movement should be speed times the opposite of the direction because the direction is for the background. So instead of creating new event handling, we'll just do the negative direction. All right, so now I'm gonna go back. And what you'll see, what I was trying to show, is the wall will actually keep moving towards you because the wall is looking at your total distance traveled and your total distance traveled is still going up. So what we're gonna do, it's actually a really easy fix. We're just gonna create a second variable that's going to be almost exactly, almost exactly the same as total distance, but we're gonna call this one player distance. 
and we're going to have one of these change based on um, based on the boundary limits variable and the other one will update no matter what so what we want to do is say if not boundary so if not boundary limits then we want to update the total distance because total distance controls where the x and y variables are but then we want the player distance no matter what to update by speed and direction and so what we want to show on screen is player distance because we want to be tracking and this will be a little bit if you're confused right now i think as soon as we get to the actual demonstration of what's going on this will make more sense um, but I will try to explain it best I can. So we have these two things, player distance and total distance, and they're very close, but they are slightly different. So let me load in. Um, we went pretty quick there. Let me just load this in and see if that fixes it. Okay. So we're going to hit a thousand. There you go. And the wall stops moving at this point, but the player distance does not, which is good because we want that distance traveled to count overall. Like the player is still moving and should be able to move. Now we're going to go right. And I had hoped the wall would disappear. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at what we're doing. I think I know what we did. Uh, the So we're checking total distance for boundary limits. Yeah. And we want to check player distance. Okay. So you need to think about this as two separate things going on. We use player distance to determine when we need to stop moving the boundaries. And then we use a different variable total distance to control the position of the walls. So that's why uh, let's go ahead and run this. Now I'll be able to show what we want. Um, so right now player distance and total distance are exactly the same. And as soon as we hit a thousand, there we go. Um, the wall stops moving. I can still move the player and that's still updating our total distance traveled. And then once I go past a thousand, the wall stops, which is exactly what we want. So let's go get to, it'll be like 1400 when we see the right wall. Do, 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 and should be there now. Mm, where to go? <laughs> okay. Well, it made me a liar. Um, I mean, you can see the background stopped at right around the right spot, which was 1400. Oh, we got a little green there. Okay, so I think what we want to do is maybe just move this back a little further. So finish line plus total distance minus six. I thought that'd be enough, but we'll go we'll go minus eight just because I want to be able to see it when I get to 1400. Okay, there you go. So we get to 1400 and uh, it stops and then we can move. I mean, the thing is we haven't done anything to handle like actually ending the level like victory um, where if you collide with the finish line, you win the game or something. Um, but that's a little out of the scope of this video. It's already getting up to like a 15 minute tutorial. I hope you found this concept pretty simple, pretty clear. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for tons more content in the future, uh, just like this. And I really appreciate all the support. If you have any questions about what you saw here, feel free to leave me a comment asking about it. Or if you want to see something in a future video, be sure to ask that in the comments as well. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.